Bonjour, Natalie here. Welcome to Franco Foods. Today, we're leaving the North American continent and traveling to Western Africa, where we'll discover the food of Senegal. I'll be making Senegal's national dish, Chiboudian. It's a dish consisting of fish, rice, tomato sauce, and vegetables. To round off the meal, I'll make the national dessert called chiakri. It resembles rice pudding, but it's made with millet. By the way, although chiakri and chiboudian might sound maybe French, maybe English, maybe a combination, not sure about chiakri, but I know that chiboudian is a word in the Wolof language. So if I'm not pronouncing these words properly, I do apologize to anyone from Senegal. So there are a lot of vegetables in this recipe. There's a lot of chopping and peeling and peeling and chopping. So I'm going to start off by taking care of all that before I get to the cooking part. So you might be wondering, why did I choose Senegal for this episode? Well, as you may or may not remember, the month of March is International Francophonie Month, where all things French are celebrated. And I thought it would be fitting to finish off Francophonie Month talking about Senegal, since the original idea for what is now the Organisation Internationale de la Francophonie, which is International Francophonie, who, who organizes the Francophonie Month, it was first proposed in 1970 by then President of Senegal, Leopold Sédar Senghor. This is a part of the world I've never visited, and I didn't want to talk about it à travers mon chapeau, as we say in French. So I reached out to the Senegalese embassy. I was very happy when I received a response from a lovely lady named Khadi Diopsal, and I hope I said that right, Khadi. We had a great conversation. Khadi is first secretary of the Senegalese embassy in Washington, D.C., and she's been stationed there for four years. I wanted to know how Chiboudian came about and its importance to the Senegalese culture. Well, of According to Hadi, Chiboudian was created by a cook who worked in a colonial residence in Saint Louis in the early 1900s. Remember that, and I say remember, you know, as if I would have known this before, <laughs> but Senegal was a French colony. And so Saint Louis was the hub of Senegal in those days. The cook's name was Penda Mbe. She was the one who would make the meals in this mansion or colonial residence for whatever event for a lot of people. One day, she went grocery shopping to get what she needed from the market for the daily meal. And when she came home, the findings that day were rather meager. So she didn't have a lot of ingredients to work with. She decided, well, you know, mother necessity. She experimented with what she had. She did have rice, so she steamed the rice. And then she had vegetables, including tomatoes and eggplant and root vegetables. And so she made a tomato-based stew. But she also had fish dried fish. So she utilized herbs and whatnot to add to the stew. Well, when all was done, all the vegetables were cooked and the fish were, they were all ready to be eaten. She put them in the platter to be served. There was a fair bit of juice left over from the stew. Not wanting to waste anything, she decided to just throw in the steamed rice and mix it all up. And then she put that on the serving tray and she served everything up. Her boss loved it. In fact, he was so impressed with the meal and how delicious it was that it became a staple in that home. Not only that, they were hosting, right? A lot of people got to taste it. Not only did it spread across Saint Louis, it eventually spread throughout Senegal. It is such an important part now of Senegalese culture that Khadi told me without Chiboudian, there is no Senegal. In fact, in the culinary world, Chiboudian is Senegal. What surprises me about Chiboudian is that it's not a spicy dish. Now, when I was researching, looking for a recipe, prior to my conversation with Hadi, you know, there were various versions, and some had chili peppers and, you know, hot you know, scotch bonnet peppers and whatnot added to it. But in my conversation with her, she said the true traditional Chiboudian, the one from Penda Mabey, is only salt and pepper. Now, obviously, with time, different areas have put their own twist on Chiboudian. Of course, that includes adding spices with a kick. I guess that's one of the fun things about this dish is obviously there is the traditional one that I'm talking about, but really it's kind of a great 
canvas that you use what's seasonal, kind of adapt it to your area, to your locale. So while I was chatting with uh, with Khadi, I, I, I wanted to learn a little bit more about Senegal. So I asked her a little bit about the industry in Senegal. Agriculture is actually the main industry, specifically the cultivation of peanuts and mangoes. So I guess that kind of makes sense then that when you start by making your chibudian, you would use peanut oil. Also, I asked Khadi what she misses most from home besides family. And without hesitation, she said that whenever she's home, she goes to St. Louis and she enjoys just sitting by the ocean and enjoying the traditional dish, chibudian. That for her is being home. And also, there are a couple of ingredients I was not able to find to make this, at least not here, including a dried fish. It's a specific type of dried fish called yidi or yeet. I've found a couple of different spellings and pronunciations, but it's a very apparently particular type of fish that, according to Khadi, adds a flavor that reminds her of French cheese. Okay, so the fish is cooked and set aside. And now my veggies are cooking. So it's time to make the chiakri. I'm really looking forward to trying it because I love rice pudding. So it's going to be really neat to see how this differs. I mean, it seems pretty simple. I did some research on millet because I'd never eaten any before. And it winds up millet is very nutritious. So this is something I plan on not telling the kids if they enjoy the chiakri. I did ask Khadi about chiakri and she said it's definitely considered the national dessert. Vendors will sell it on the streets. It's well loved, but not to the level of chibudian was my impression. So I did ask her, you know, what other desserts are popular in Senegal? And she said that really at the end of the meal, if people want to eat a little something sweet, they're going to eat fruit. So I figured, wow, that's definitely different from the American sweet tooth. Okay, so what's the final verdict? We've eaten the chibudian, we've had the chiakri. Well, I'm happy to say that we all enjoyed the chibudian. I'll definitely make it again. This week's vocabulary words are le poisson, le riz, la patate douce, la tomate, une aubergine, pelée. The only thing is I would simplify the process. The recipe I was following, it was multi-stepped and I think I could have simplified it. One way definitely would be to make the rice ahead of time. The chiakri, we all loved it. It was my first time cooking millet, so I was a little unsure of how much time, but really it's again very close to rice. You just have to follow the instructions and boil it and there you go. I'm definitely interested in trying other millet recipes because again, it's very nutritious, so that's not a bad thing and especially if If you're gluten intolerant or have gluten issues, that's great. Another benefit. So, but yeah, I guess you could say millet was a revelation for me. I did find that as a dish, the chiakri, the texture reminded me of rice pudding, but the flavor, I, it's probably due to the, the sour cream. It added a zing to it, I guess. So the flavor reminded me a little bit more of yogurt. Honestly, I think next time I'd make more because I think that chiakri would make a great breakfast and I'd add berries to it. It, I think that would make her, you know, I think that'd be good. I will probably try that. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I hope you enjoyed discovering Senegal like I did. It's opened up a new world of cooking and I'm very excited about that. I certainly will be trying other Senegalese recipes. I encourage you to check the links in the description with different recipes as well as the link to the Senegalese embassy. I'd like to say a special thank you. Merci beaucoup, Khadi, for your time and sharing your story with With me. I really appreciated that. If you enjoyed this video, consider pressing that like button. It's always nice to see that you enjoy it. See you next week. Merci et à la prochaine.